part two of episode 11 of Smack Talk here at SmartGapMoment.com. We are going to talk about Kane and John Cena and Zack Ryder and Eve Torres and Attire and the horrible WWE creative person who thought of this bullshit. It has to be the same person who thought of Beth and Natalia jogging around the ring that one time. It has wait, to be. Wait, Tony. I have to do this. Now, look, if you, you didn't get this the uh, first time, you threatened to come to your house. But you still do this. <laughs> it's you booked the entire show this time. Stop it. Stop it now, or we'll fuck you up. <laughs> and we got Brandon now, so there's four of us. We're what? growing slowly. <laughs> slowly but surely. Exactly. So you can take that em- empty threat guy that we don't know. <laughs> uh, well, we know I thoroughly you. enjoyed it. Keep up the good work. <laughs> 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 All right. Let me let me first off say this. And this is going to justify everything I say afterward. According to, uh, what website was it? Uh, F4W Online. The segment lost 544,000 viewers, and it was one of the lowest rated quarter hour of the non-episode editions of Raw in pretty much a decade. So there you go. I'm getting that right out of the bat right here to say about how awful I thought this was. And it was for a couple of different reasons. Number one, it makes Zack Ryder look like, once again, he's just John Cena's little buddy. And it was the only reason he got into this thing was because John Cena did. Now, I hate that they're pairing him up with Cena because I think the whole point of that from their side is Zack Ryder's really popular. Let's try to get Cena to get some of those cheers from Ryder. And I understand business side why that would make sense but at the same time i don't like it because they should have realized by now after all these years that doing that with anybody cena is still going to get booed number two reason why i hate this unless they turn them on right number two reason why i hate this is it's yet another pairing of another superstar with a diva where the diva is one of their quotes of the whole smart, sexy, powerful thing, you're supposed to not look at them as a sexist kind of thing. And any time that the divas get involved in the wrestlers, it always becomes they're these helpless little people. Now it's Kane, sure, I understand. But right after this, bitching and complaining about this kind of stuff, we've got the episode of SmackDown where the match gets thrown out because AJ gets bumped by the big show. That was so, awesome. Here's another thing of that. Number three reason why I don't like this is if you're going to have a backstage segment, don't have it that fast after you have a backstage segment. What I mean by that is we just did the thing with Randy Orton getting thrown down the steps, and we haven't had a backstage beatdown like that in quite a while. So right after they do that, they do another one on Raw. Number four, if I am I on four, I don't know. There's way too many here. I'm losing track. If you're going to do a backstage segment, don't have the obvious padding when you choke slam Zack Ryder. Now, I don't want you to slam him down on the actual concrete and shit and injure the Kill guy. Kill the motherfucker. No. Kill but him. He bounced up like he was on a fucking trampoline. I mean, it, oh my god. It's... And then finally, the last thing that I'm going to go with here, and then I'll let you guys talk, is thank you. Our truth and Kane have the exact same gimmick right now. They are are following somebody backstage and everybody's looking around over their shoulders about when they're going to get attacked. And I don't know how WWE creative can look at that and go, all right, are we going to do the backstage segment where Kane stalks somebody? And then we're going to go into the truth one. And then we're going to go to the one with Kane and then the one with truth. Wait a minute. Aren't we kind of repeating ourselves here? Nah, fuck it. Let's just have Jericho come out and say nothing again. <laughs> and cry. Right. Yeah, that's so, a very important detail. You just have well, sex. That's why. I got this out of my way and i'm sure i'm going to touch on this other little thing a little bit later but i'm gonna let you guys go what do you guys think (laughs) okay i'm gonna um add to this basically the whole kane segment thing actually ruined three different um like matches three different storylines just for, for the fact of association here right first one was the the rider swagger u.s title situation because and I don't understand how they got this wrong. When someone's chasing after you, or if someone's attempting to kill you, would you really stop and change a fucking tire? Oh my god. The thing with the tire, too, it's... 
Was that supposed to be Ryder's car? We they didn't specify. We we don't know whose car that was. Were they jacking it? Well, right. If it was supposed <laughs> if it was supposed to be Ryder's car, then why didn't he just go? Hey Eve, didn't you drive here too? Let's go to your fucking car. No, but I would have. If someone's going after you, like if it's the fucking apocalypse and zombies are trying to eat my brain, I'm gonna run in that fucking car and drive it no matter the condition. Right. Okay. And and usually the cliche for that is that they get in the car, even in the movies, and it won't start. Right. Yeah. Would have even probably been a little better, but Zack Ryder for a whole segment they go through the Cena Ziggler match, you know, from commercial break he's still fixing the same back tire, and then <laughs> you come back to it and he's still on the same tire. It's like what were you just twisting the knob for twenty minutes? What are you doing? There's a joke here of twisting the knob with Eve. Pretty yeah, much. That's what Chase was doing before he lost his connection. <laughs> yeah. Medusa, not not Eve. He was checking out with the Medusa, but like. He was apparently switching the same tire for well over 10 minutes while he's that being stalked sense. by this masked giant omnius monster. He changes the same tire for it over It was like 10 he minutes. was waiting for Kane. He was literally just sitting there going like, okay, let's see how slowly I can get this tire out just so that Kane can come in and beat my ass. Did he even yeah. switch the tire or was he just like he toying with it the whole time? Oh, he took a hubcap off. Well, at least he accomplished something in that 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but it was literally that. that, that the yeah. yeah. That, also, <laughs> like, apparently. The car was leased and he was too afraid to do any damage. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever's car that was, whether right. it be, you know, Kane's a car. civilian's, Kane's, or anybody else's, it was somebody's car. The next and time, pe- whoever cars that is, <laughs> take your own fucking tire. Don't let Zap Ryder do it. That segment made me think that Kane hates Ryder more than Cena because he gave him the more brutal attack. Isn't his whole thing about Cena embracing hate, yet he chokeslams Ryder off a ledge and Cena only gets a, a face to, like, his face crushed by Kane's hand? Yeah. See, there's a okay. joke in that as well. He doesn't want to see him. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, Dace, so you like this. Embracing hate, it's embracing man rape. Yeah. So, Dace, if you liked this episode of Raw, did you like this segment? Because, what the hell, man? Because <laughs> it took up a good portion of the show. I loved it. I loved it. It, it, it felt like that cheesy 90s stuff they used to do. It just... We lose you again? And it took me back like I was a kid, and I was yelling, behind you, he's behind you. And I think it was more directed towards kids than the uh, typical us, because if it was directed towards us, it would be in the middle of the show and a lot less. Well, apparently it wasn't directed towards well, anybody because they um, lost 550,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> and doesn't this whole setup kind of, if they do have a match at the Royal Rumble, isn't it totally geared for Cena to just overcome the odds and win again? Like, with Kane dominating every week on television, you got to think that the outcome to that match will be pretty predictable come yeah. time for their pay-per-view match. Because do you see Kane dominantly going over John Cena when he's just like two pay-per-views away from taking on The Rock at the biggest show of the year? Well, this is the thing as well. It's attempting to make Kane look strong. This is the other person that's hurting at the moment. Because with the whole like heel persona that he had, I think Tony touched on this before. The moment Kane opened his mouth, he lost all relevance as a monster heel. Mm-hmm. You know, he just basically, he's sitting there trying to sound pseudo intelligent and he's not threatening if fan. he goes oh you're all chanting cena sucks cena sucks cena sucks you know you should be burning people and shit you know <laughs> yeah exactly he needs to the, the whole quiet dominant hill thing would have worked a lot more than him standing there cutting a fucking promo calling now, people names and his tirades always go on far too long I agree every episode he's been on i couldn't agree more i actually was going to fast forward through that this past episode because he just wouldn't shut up it's the same thing embrace the hate people are booing you we get it you don't need to cut a 12 minute promo about it and especially when you're going to repeat the same thing over and over and over again like he didn't change out most of his material to make it sound different mm-hmm. And uh, I think the one at the end of last year, yeah, I'm, that's kind of early to say that, but the one at the end of December was probably the worst. Like, that felt like it was like a half an hour long, and it was just him constantly pounding the same thing over and over again. And, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that killed a lot of viewers at the beginning of the show. See, that's another Dace reference there, constantly pounding the same thing again and again. But, Innuendos. Yeah. What, what, what? You got something on your mind tonight, Mike? <laughs> Yeah, I'm just thinking about Dace. 
Um, the, the third person that this Somebody's is going to get ass raped. <laughs> is uh, the first person. The third person we uh, this whole thing is affecting is Dolph Ziggler. Because look at it. Did did anyone else see that Ziggler versus Cena match and how that totally destroyed his feud with Punk? Because this guy's been getting like cheap wins over Punk every time he turns his back. And as soon as Cena turns his back, the guy puts a sleeper hold, and then Cena literally goes super, super Cena and throws the guy onto the fucking steps. Mm. It was like, what the fuck? Literally, he just totally destroyed any push that this guy was getting towards his world title match. And nobody and really wants to see uh, Ziggler versus Punk now, because they're sitting there thinking, okay, Punk's not good enough to beat this guy, but Cena just flung him like he had no relevance whatsoever and ran to the back. What were you saying, Days? Yeah. I don't like the fact that I don't like the fact that Punk is in the mid card, like in the middle of the show. Yeah. He's the champ. He's the guy carrying the company. Put him on the top. Don't do this Cena angle at the end of the night. Well, it's WWE. You know, you know that they're gonna go. Especially if it lost more viewers than the whole thing that happened in Philadelphia. Right. Yeah. There you go. Right. That's, that's another thing as well because the ratings are basically tanking big time and they're putting their golden boy there and it's still not bringing the ratings back up and it's because of shitty little promos like this what they're having at the moment i seem it's to recall somebody saying out. that it was because of michael cole mike mike <laughs> and, uh, no, the thing is they toned cole down a lot um this week on raw and it's not you, doing anything so it's yeah if losing, you looked at him on raw and, and him on smackdown He's a lot worse on SmackDown, and the ratings on there are staying like the same, literally at a 2.2, 2.7 2. at times. Well, not you to know, mention, not... <laughs> if you're watching the whole show, did anybody really have enough interest by the time the main event rolled around? You knew Cena wasn't going to wrestle the full match. You knew he's going to go out there and do something to try and help Ryder. Did anybody yeah, really why have they just put any interest? Over? Why didn't right. they just, like, well, as soon as he saw on the title intro that Ryder was getting beaten up, have Dolph like get a quick win over Cena, mm -hmm. just to give him a bit more heat. Right, he could have done the distraction thing, and done a quick roll up or something like that. And, yeah, you know, but it's Cena, so. All well, right, that's so the thing as well, you, you tuned take in, the I only main event for Jerk, and you've thrown him to the fucking wolves before he's going to have a pay per view match. It's, it's the Miz and Truth all over again. So, final thoughts on this whole Kane thing from this week. Everybody pretty much hates it except for Days. <laughs> Dace loves yeah, everything. Long, if, Pretty I well. love it if they turn Cena heel. If they don't turn Cena, Cena heel, I will attract all my statements. All right. So I think it's we, building to something bigger. So when we go to part three, we will talk about another huge disappointment in my eyes with Chris Jericho remaining silent. Oh, boy. Stay tuned uh. for that.